My name is Ron Wright and I'm the Director of Sales for Oceans. Today's agenda, we'll talk a little bit about the satellite constellation, the Iridium 9555 tour of the, the handset itself, how to make a call, how to contact an Iridium phone, there's several ways, how to check your voicemail, how to add a contact to your address book, and how to send an SMS and an email. Uh, also, how to dial 911, and then I'm, I'll include the slides for the initial setup for the voicemail and text, although these should already be done on your handset. Iridium completed their second generation of satellites in February of 2019. Those satellites are at full power and are expected to last about 20 years. They do about 17,000 miles an hour and go around the world in about 100 minutes. We'll talk a little bit more about how to position yourself to get the best phone call, but note that they travel in a north-south or south-north path. The primary gateway is located in Tempe, Arizona, although there are additional gateways located around the world to provide seamless, robust coverage at any time. This is a snapshot of the Iridium satellite network. Each of these circles represents the spot beam of the satellite itself and envision those going around the world in 100 minutes. So they cross the horizon. If they go directly over your head, uh, they cross the sky in about eight minutes. Because there are several in view, as long as you have a good view of open sky, you should be able to continue your phone call. Now, the narrower your view to the sky, the, uh, the more likely you are to experience drop calls. But the big point to note here is it's like a moving cell tower. So you don't have to reposition yourself to get a better satellite uh, service unless it's to get a better view of the sky. So the more open sky you can see, the better your phone will work. Now, wet foliage and buildings and any other structures block the signal. So you have to stand outside and you want as much, you want to be able to see as much of the sky as you can. 50% uh, or more is recommended. In touring this, the biggest thing I want to point out is that uh, the uh, SIM card is located underneath the battery in the battery compartment. Uh, it's a, a, an interesting slot, so you want to use some care, but I do recommend in tracking your phones that you keep track of the IMEI, which is on a label that's under the battery as well, uh, and the SIM number. So the IMEI is related directly to the handset that you have, and that won't change for the hardware. But if you take the SIM card out of one phone and put it in another, you do move the service and subscription to that other phone. So those things, if you're trying to track your inventory, you want to make sure you know which SIM card is in which, which handset. Other than that, some quick things to point out. The power key is in the, at the very top of the phone. You press and hold that for a few seconds to turn the handset on. On the right hand side, you'll see a button that looks a lot like a push to talk button. It's not. It's actually a convenience key that can be programmed to bring up a specific function on the phone. On the left-hand side, uh, you'll find your volume keys. Uh, when the phone is not during a call, the volume keys adjust the volume of the ringer. During a call, it adjusts, adjusts the volume of the call itself. Below the display, uh, just below the display, you'll see two buttons. Those two buttons correspond to the, to the two buttons shown on the uh, uh, bottom of the LCD screen. So the left-hand button would correspond to the menu in these, this example, and the right-hand button would correspond to the help button on, on the right. Also, it should be noted that if you look in the top, you've got signal strength for your phone in the upper left-hand corner in the standard bars we're used to, and then your battery, the state of charge for your battery in the right-hand side. Note on this particular screen, it still says searching for Iridium. So this phone's not ready to make a call yet. Uh, when it's uh, ready, it will say registered, uh, and then you can initiate a phone call. Uh, we'll talk about dialing, but I will point out the green key starts your call and the red key stops the call. Also, I want to quickly point out that the headset jack and the DC power jack look very similar. And I want to caution you when you connect your charger to make sure that you're plugging it into the DC port. You can break the jacks on these phones, and if you do, it, it pretty much ruins the telephone. So you want to use a little care. Making a, a phone call, again, is really important. This is a lot like a cell phone, but it does have a few, few key things that we should point out. Most importantly, that you do have to have a clear view of the sky. You do have to step outside. Some windows will work for a temporary call, but in most commercial buildings, there's a coating on the glass that prevents the phone from being able to make a call at all. Plus the fact that you're, you only have a limited view of the sky would make for a short phone call. So I highly recommend you step outside and then you should step away from the building. The farther you get from the building, the less obstructing of the sky that is. So stepping out in the parking lot is as opposed to standing right next to the door of the building gives you a much better view of the sky. 
Uh, the satellites uh, begin use at about 10 degrees above the horizon. So uh, again, the more you can see. And then in a metropolitan area, you want to make sure you have an opening that, that faces north-south. Uh, if, uh, if you're trying to prepare for an emergency, I would recommend that your, your most commonly traveled places that you would uh, make note of uh, which uh, side of the building to stand to get the best view north-south. Also, uh, it should be noted the antenna needs to be fully extended and to operate best should be pointing straight up. Now, if you switch this uh, from the right-hand side of your head to the left-hand side, the antenna has to move as well. If you don't, you will likely drop the call. We'll talk a little bit more about this. So in this image, you'll show in the Northwest, especially trees that are wet uh, have a major impact on the performance of the phone. Now, during a dry summer day, that's not as, not as uh, important, but it is uh, since we typically see a lot of rain, you wanna be sure that uh, you step away from the trees and just can see the open sky. You pull on the end of the antenna until it fully extends, and then the entire antenna shifts to the left or right to correspond to, to, to keep it vertical, depending on which side of your head you put it on. It should also be noted that you do have the ability to lock the handset. So if you're carrying this handset, there is a, the ability to do that by pressing and holding the star key. And to unlock, you do the same thing. Again, the green and red keys start and stop the calls. And this screen is a great example of a phone that is reg ready to make a call. Note the word registered. That, that is the key. Uh, if you don't see that, your phone may not have uh, an active subscription. Okay, moving on. In order to call an Iridium, uh, Iridium should, should, it should be noted here that Iridium is considered its own country. And the, uh, the country code, as opposed to the US, our, 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 our country code, which is one, the uh, country code for an Iridium is 881. So when dialing from a landline or a cell phone, uh, in, and, and again, we're going to cover several different ways to contact a phone. This is really my least recommended, but I want to make sure you know how to do that. To dial to an Iridium phone, you dial it like an international number. So one, you'll need to make sure you have international dialing on your phone. And two, you'll dial 011, and then the country code, again, the 881, and then the, uh, the rest of the 12-digit phone number. So you can see from this example how you would dial. Again, in order for this to work, the, the, person, the Iridium phone that you're calling must be registered and active on the network to receive the call at that moment. So again, we have some better ways to call, but it should be noted if the phone is not in the docking kit, this is best done by coordinating a, a timed call. So, hey, everybody's going to step outside at, at three o'clock this afternoon so they can uh, receive the phone call. Uh, again, I have some better ways to go, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, it should also be noted, you can call an Iridium from another Iridium phone. In order to do that, uh, press and hold the zero key until the plus sign appears and then dial the Iridium phone number. So again, starting with the 8816. Very simple. Again, press and hold the zero key for a few seconds. You'll see the plus key. This is the same way you dial if you took your phone and went to Canada. You would press and hold the, the zero key until the plus uh, appeared. And again, I say this on your cell phone. The Iridium phones have no designation. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You dial and, and use them exactly the same. There's really no limitations other than laws. I, I will say that China and India uh, have laws against being able to bring and use an Iridium phone or really any satellite phone. Press and hold the zero key until the plus sign appears and then dial the number you're trying to call. Another way you can call an Iridium phone is using two-stage dialing. So two-stage dialing is a standard phone number that you call. This can be put in the phone or stored on a label. Uh, it's this number here. Uh, that's uh, 1-480-768-2500. Uh, from there, the phone will ring, and then you'll be prompted to enter the 12-digit uh, Iridium phone number, again, starting with the 8816. Please note that when you do that, when you use two-stage dialing, there's an additional charge above your contract rate that is, that is charged by the minute at $1.59 per minute. Uh, again, uh, uh, stay tuned. We have a better method than this, but this is a, a great example. Everybody has access to this, and this avoids the need for two state or uh, international dialing from the handset you're calling from. The best way to contact an Iridium handset is to send a text message to it. Now, I recommend that you enter the, instead of just sending the text message directly to the phone number, which would require international texting, and on iPhones, it tends to throw a lot of extra garbage characters in. I recommend you enter it in the form of an email address. So you go to your text text program, but instead of dialing a phone number or entering a phone number, you enter it in the form of the Iridium phone number plus the at sign msg.iridium.com. Now, alternatively, if you have internet access and you can do this with a smartphone as well, you would go to this website, messaging.iridium.com. 
From there, it's very self-explanatory. There's a box to enter the Iridium phone number with no dashes or dots. And then there's a body that counts the number of characters that you've entered and then a send button. And after you press send, there is a, a notification that the message has reached their system. It doesn't tell you that the subscriber has received your message, but it does show that the message has been transmitted. And the next time that phone is in service, it will uh, beep and notify the user that they have a message waiting and prompt them uh, to, to read the message. Really easy and, and far and away the best way to contact an Iridium phone. It is free to do this. The, the Iridium handset subscriber can receive text messages for free uh, uh, up to, I believe it's 10 an hour. Uh, but far and away, the best way to coordinate a call that says, hey, we're all going to step outside at three o'clock and uh, be ready to, to receive a phone call. We also offer VOCO numbers. The VOCO number is specifically for a landline to dial a U.S. phone number to reach the Iridium handset. Just like the two stage dialing, there is an additional charge per minute when you do that. That's beyond your contact rate. It's $1.49 a minute when you when you call this way. Now that U.S. phone number is only good for calling from a landline to the Iridium. Uh, you cannot use that number for texting. So, uh, and it also does not appear when uh, on caller ID when uh, calling from an Iridium. The Iridium number is what will be shown. To check your voicemail, it's really quick and easy. You press and hold the one key until you see the word calling. And again, it should be noted your phone, you, just like making a phone call, you're, you do have to be outside uh, with an open view of the sky. Uh, again, this process is going to take you a few minutes, so you want to make sure you have a good view of the sky, 50% or more. Uh, when your greeting comes on, you interrupt that with the star key, and then the default password is the last seven digits of your Iridium satellite phone number. From there, you can follow the prompts to listen to your message and, and navigate the menu. To add a contact to your phone is pretty simple. Uh, there's a couple of different ways. This is the, the most straightforward way to just enter a bunch of contacts. So you uh, press the soft key that corresponds to the menu button uh, and then follow the prompts to, to my phone book, options, and new. From there, you'll see an entry form that's pretty self-explanatory. You also use the up down key in between the two soft keys uh, to navigate up and down within that form to enter phone numbers. It should be noted that when you once you've got contacts in the phone, you do have the ability to select them in several things, whether you're sending a text message, an email, uh, or making a call. Uh, you will only have to enter a contact once, but you will notice that there are several places for phone numbers and a place for an email address. To send a text message, it's uh, it, it this should be practiced a little bit, but again, it, it, in the event of an emergency, text messages get through a lot better than phone calls do. Even with WEPs and GETs, I recommend that you become fairly proficient at this. This is probably the most referred to slide, so uh, sometimes it's best to just print this and put this in the box with your phone. But what you do is you dial the phone number. In this particular example, uh, this is my phone number. Press and hold the zero key until the plus sign appears, then dial the country code, which in this example is one, and then the phone number. Uh, from there, you're going to select the options and then SMS, create your message. And it should be noted, you press options and then send. You're going to press send twice. So the first one kind of cues it up, especially in the Northwest here. It's really nice to just get the message ready to go. And then you step out in the rain or, or weather and press the send. It takes just a few moments to send the message. And you, you do get a notification confirming the message has been sent. And you can go back inside. But you do press send twice. This should be practiced a couple of times. I highly recommend that as part of your test, uh, reoccurring test procedures. To send an email on the 9555, press the menu key and choose messages. It will open to the body of the message. If the email is not in your contact list, start with the email address and add a space before you start the rest of your message. If the email address is in your contact list, you'll get a chance to select it when you're ready to send the message. While in the body of the message, you can select the option button and choose predictive text to make typing the message a little easier. To do this, select options, then predictive text. Once selected, you return to the message body. Now when you type, you can hit the corresponding letter key just once and predictive text will continue to correct the letters until the right word appears. For some, this is faster than the multipress method. For example, to type the word test, you just hit 8378 instead of 8337778. You can see how that's much easier. Once you've created your message, select options and send. If the contact wasn't in your address book, select add and you'll see an enter number. Press select and you'll see a dialing window with a plus sign. Then dial star two, choose OK, and then you'll select send to transmit the message. This is the final send where you'll need to step outside. Let the phone register on the network. 
and then select that final send. You can dial 911 on your Iridium phone, but it should be noted that it does not have a GPS. So the folks that answer know you're on a limited connectivity and there's an ambassador, this Intrado, that answers the call and then passes you on to the PSAP after, uh, after helping you get your position. And based on your position, they can help uh, route that call to the, the correct contact. But just dialing uh, um, an emergency service, uh, there is no position contained, unlike when you dial 911 on your cell phone. These two slides are meant to really be read. This is a one-time process and has probably been done on your handset already, but I've included them for your own reference. Uh, there's also a setup for the text messaging as well. Again, this is a one-time one only setup and uh, it likely has already been done. But should you have to check or, or have any problems, uh, you have this to refer to. Finally, these are links uh, to the uh, how to make a call, how to test your phone, and how to set up and send an SMS and links to the quick reference guide, which should probably be uh, printed and kept with the phone. And then the user guide, which is too big to probably print, but it's nice to refer to it if you're looking for a, a, a little used feature. This final slide includes Ocean's technical support contact information. Thank you so much for your time and your business. All the best.